Okay, one more time. How many outcomes are possible if you flip a coin three times? Six. Six. What do we know? Uh -huh. So let's think about it a little bit more carefully. I'm flipping coin three times, right? The first flip, this is my first flip, this is my second flip, this is my third flip, right? So how many different outcomes for the first flip? Two. Two, right? It's either heads or tails. How many, if, if, let's say the heads was the outcome of the first flip. How many outcomes after that? Heads and tails. For the second flip? Two. Two, right? Heads or tails. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm creating that tree that you created always when you talked about this kind of uh, problems, right? On the first flip, outcomes are either heads or tails. If I have a head, on the second flip, again, I have either heads or tails. If it's a tail, again, it could be heads or tails, right? And then for the third flip, once again, whatever happened before doesn't matter. It's always three different outcomes, heads or tails, heads or tails, and so on and so forth, right? So what are the different combinations of the outcomes that I can possibly have? Heads, 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 right? Heads, tails, or heads, heads, tails, right? Heads, tails, heads. So I'm kind of looking at all these different possibilities, how I can travel from the beginning of the tree all the way to the end, to the final branch, right? So the next one is heads, tails, heads. And then heads, tails, tails. And I can continue listing every single possibility and then just counting them. But I can also notice that the number of possibilities will be what? Two times two times two. Agree? Two possibilities for each one of them. Two possibilities for each one of these two possibilities. Do we agree? Agree? Yeah. So the answer is actually eight different outcomes. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So now that we are so much smarter, let's try the next one. Hmm? No, I said smarter. Even if you're a genius, you can get smarter, right? By training your brain. Yes. The growth mindset versus <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's continue to the second example now. A daily offers three types of bread. Okay, let's read. A daily offers three types of bread: wheat, white, and dry. Three types of meat: ham, turkey, or bologna, and two types of cheese: cheddar and provolone. Assuming a customer can choose the bread, meat, and cheese, how many different choices are there? You want to try by yourself? Yeah, let's do it. Yes, let's do this. Okay, so let's do it together. We don't want to list them all. I did. Yeah, I know you didn't. Okay, so I'm choosing three items in my order. I'm choosing the bread, right? I'm choosing the meat and I'm choosing the cheese, correct? So let's say the first choice is about the bread. How many choices will I have? I have three choices. Wheat, white, or uh, rye. Like so once I've chosen the, once I've chosen the bread, I need to choose the meat, right? And the choice is independent of the bread, right? So for every single one of my bread choice, I'll have how many choices of meat? Three, right? So each one of them will have three choices of meat, which is uh, ham, turkey, or bologna. Ham, turkey, bologna, and so on, right? And then. Once I've chosen my bread and my meat, how many choices do I have for the cheese? Two. So two more branches coming out of the last one. So 
So I have the cheddar or provolone, cheddar or provolone, cheddar or provolone. If I continue doing this, right, let's say I want to look at this example. If I traveled, I chose the white bread and then I chose the ham and then I chose the uh, cheddar. So these kind of these, um, wait, what's this? Root? You know, this root will give me the choice of white bread, ham, and cheddar. Right, so that's one of the possibilities. But I need to account for every one of these roots. So how many roots total will I have? It's three times what? Three times two. Agree? So the total number will be 18. And that is exactly what the fundamental counting principle that you learned before says. As long as choices are independent, independent choices, <coughs> just multiply number of choices or possibilities, let's say possibilities, of each choice. Right? My choices are independent of one another. I can choose any bread, and then I can choose any meat, and I can choose any cheese. Uh, cheese. So the choices, or the events, as we call them in statistics, are totally independent, so we just multiply the number of choices. Yep, exactly. So let's read the, you know, the text here. Fundamental counting principle. If one event can occur in M ways, and another event can occur in N ways, then the number of ways that both events can occur is what? M times N. So this is just for two events, for two choices, just bread and meat. Right? And if you have more than that, let's say you have three choices, if three events can occur in M, N, and P ways, then the number of ways that all three events can occur is what? Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is our last example. Questions? <coughs> as long as these events are independent. Okay, let's look at another example. A movie theater sells three sizes of popcorn, small, medium, and large, and I will have three choices of toppings. No, but no butter, butter, and extra butter. How many possible ways can a bag of popcorn be purchased? What do you think? Right, so we have two different events or two different choices, right? One for the size and one for the toppings. Two different events. One has three choices and the other has three choices. So we need to multiply them to get all possible outcomes, right? And that's exactly how the tree would look. First I choose the size and then for each of these sizes I choose the topping. Correct? So that's the plan. Very good. No, <laughs> some of them will be a little bit more complicated. Just kill it off. Okay. So now we are ready to talk about actual permutations and combinations. So first example. In the committee of three, how many ways you can assign the roles of president, vice president, and regular member? Hmm? What do you think? If I have three people in the committee, how many ways can we assign the roles president, vice president, and regular member? Nine. Maybe. Nine. nine. You think it's nine? nine? One person cannot take all three roles. Remember this? 
if I'm looking for the president, vice president and member, right? If I'm starting with the president, how many choices for the president? Two. Oh, <laughs> three people. Are you discriminating? Oh. <laughs> I have three people, Mary, uh, Louis, and Ava. How many choices for president? Three choices, right? And then once I chose the president, I need to choose the vice president. How many choices left? Let's Two. say Louis is the president. Two. Two. And then once I've chosen vice president, how many? One. Just one. So my three will look just a little bit different because I cannot reuse the same people for different roles. So it's six. Nice. Huh? Screen. So let's think about the three, right? The first choice is, um, let's say it's Louis, Eva, and Mary are my people, right? So for the choice of president, I will have Louis, Eva, or Mary, right? And then once I choose who is the president, if I choose Louis, then for the vice president, I have choices of Ava and Mary only, because Louis already has a role. If I choose Ava to be the president, then the choices for vice president is just Louis and Mary. And if I choose Mary as the president, then the choices for vice president will be what? Louis and Ava, correct? And once I choose the first two roles, the other one is just given, correct? Because it's just one person left on the on the committee. So here I have Mary, and here I have Eva, and here I have Mary again, and Louis, and Eva, and Louis. Correct? For the members, right? So that's why I have to multiply three times two times one. We'll have the formula, so don't worry about it. You will not have to do the three every time. This kind of selection, how we get to the Okay, so the second example. In the class of 25, we are choosing three students to be in the committee, right? So now we started 25 students total, uh, and we are choosing three students to be in the committee where each student will be assigned the role president, vice president, or regular member. So how many different committees can be formed now? I have the role of president to fill, I have the role of vice president to fill, and I have a role of member to fill. How many different committees do you think we can form? Three. How many choices do I have for the president? Three. Three. How many choices do you think I will have for vice president? Three. Five. After I chose the president? Three. Four. And how many choices for the members? And then I'm done. Exactly. Let me just double check with Marky. Yes, that's what I have. 13,800 different committees possible out of just 25 students. Which number of committees? Hmm? Questions? I say I promise it will get easier. Okay. Huh? No. No. Doesn't mean that. Okay. Final example. What if in the same example, but the committee does not have any roles? Right? So it's just we are choosing out of 25 students in the class, we are choosing the committee of three, mm -hmm. but no roles. Wouldn't it be the same? No, no. Because Some of these committees, role. right, that we just created, these 13,800 committees, some of these committees will have exactly the same members, right? Right? How many committees will have exactly the same members Ava, Louis, and Mary. So How many committees out of these 13,000 will have exactly the same members, uh, Louis, Ava, and Mary, if I can reorder Louis, Ava, and Mary in six different ways? So, so there will be six committees 
with exactly the same members. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? Out of just Louis, Ava, and Mary, I can I can create six different orders. And since I don't care about the order anymore, in these all of these different choices, every six committees will have the same members, right? So all I need to do is take my number of committees and divide by six. Two thousand. Do you see why? Do you understand why this number is so much less? Mm -hmm. No, because if I create the two thousand committees, right, where there are no roles, right, then each of those groups of three people could be assigned yeah, roles in six that. different ways, right? So. From the number of committees where, where there are no roles to the number of committees where there are roles, I have to multiply by six. Make sense? More or less intuitive? Okay. So, to get to our formula so it gets easier, permutations and combinations. Permutation, this first word, is the arrangement of items. Oh, I don't know. It's my definition. Where order matters. Order matters. So, example would be placing people in roles. Committee with the roles, placing people in roles. most important part of this definition is the order matters. So highlight order matters for permutation. Order matters. Like when you're placing people in specific roles. And now combination. It's an arrangement. of items where order does not matter. So the order does not matter. I like that. Somehow. That's the most important part of this definition. Combination, order does not matter. So the example would be choosing a group or committee without the roles. When I simply choose the group and the roles or order does not matter anymore. Before we can get to the formulas for the permutation and combination, we need to talk about the factorial because it's used there. So the factorial is when you multiply, well, let's just use this uh, definition. So n factorial, this is what we write, n factorial, this symbol used is the exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. So n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and all the way 3 to 1. So what I mean by that is you, you multiply all the numbers, integers, from your number down to 1. Mm -hmm. So n yep. times n minus 1 times mm -hmm. 2 equals mm -hmm. So the example would be... 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Times 3 times 2 times 1. And then the example would be 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you start with your number and then you go down all the way to 1. And you multiply all those numbers. Hmm? In calculator, you just go math, probability, and then 
excavation point before pictures. So let's practice. Let's do one manually and one calculator. Three factorial. What does it mean? Three times two times one, which is six. Six. That's it. Twenty factorial. I don't want to do this with my, you know, by writing out twenty times nineteen times eighteen times all the way. So we'll just use calculator. Because it starts with the number and then oh. go down by one, all the way to one. So four factorial is four times three times two times one. Oh, Multiply amazing. all the numbers. That's it. Yeah, let's do this. So 20, and then for factorial I'll go to math, job, and then number four for factorial. Yeah, yeah, let's do this again. So you, you enter the number 20, math, go to the right a couple of times to the probability probe, and then there number four is your factorial. Choice number four, your factorial. So 20 exclamation mark. Enter, and it's a huge number. It doesn't fit into the screen. That's why we have a scientific notation. What does E mean? 10 to the power of 18, right? So because this number is so large, that is why we have this. Yeah. Yes, let's do this. Let's do this and then we'll do like 12 factorial. So 20 factorial is 2 times 43 to 9, 0, 9, 0, 0, 8 to the 10 to the power of 18. Wait, two Which times number? or two points? Two points. This is two points. <laughs> Four three nine. I'm just copying zero nine zero two zero zero eight times ten to the power of eighteen. Huge number. Doesn't fit into our calculator screen. So let's do another example right here. So let's do like twelve factorial equals in the calculator. Let me see. Okay, so twelve mass strob and then number four. 12 factorial equals normal number. And it will be smaller. Aren't we looking for zero? What do you mean zero? I'm looking for the 12 factorial. So this number is just 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times uh, 7 times 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All multiplied. Right? So this is the number that you get. So 4, 7, 9. Zero zero one. Ah, uh, six. Huge number. Zero factorial. One. one. Zero factorial equals one, and you can check in your calculator that. Questions about factorials? Just multiplying the numbers from one to that number. Okay, so now, the main portion of this lesson. Two formulas that are on your formula sheet, on SOL formula sheet. So you don't have to memorize them. One formula is how many permutations of n objects taken r at a time. Right, so we are choosing, choosing R objects out of 10, or out of N, sorry, and order them. So order matters, permutation, order matters. That is your formula, this is how we write it, so N, P, R, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. That will practice. And then the second one for combinations, when the order does not matter, right? So we're just choosing r objects out of n objects, and we don't care about the order anymore. So in our examples two and three, which one is combination, which one is permutation? 
When I chose the committees with the role, is it permutation or combination? <coughs> permutation. And when I chose com committees without the role, combination. Very good. So let's try. The first one will try manually using foremost menu. Yes. Okay. Twelve gymnasts compete in the all-around finals at the Olympics. How many different combinations of gymnasts can win a medal in all around? So, how many medals are given? Three. Three medals, right? So, we have three medals. So, we need to choose three people to give medals to out of 12 gymnasts. So why, do you know the, why do you know the three medals? Well, just assuming gold, bronze, set, yeah, silver. Well, you wouldn't give that problem. We would tell you how many medals. Okay. Yeah. But here we assume gold, silver, and bronze, right? So we need to choose three people out of 12 to give medals to. And in this part of the problem, we don't care about who is getting which medal. All we care about how, how many possible combinations of gymnasts can get medal, any medal. So is this combination or permutation? Combination. I don't care about order, so this is combination problem. So I use the formula for combination. Out of 12 people, I'm choosing three. So 12C3. Mrs. Osborne, how do you pronounce this? 12C3 or? So um, I think they say before 12, choose three. 12 choose 3. What about the yeah. 12 choose 3. Huh. 12 choose. I never three. I've never used this. So 12 choose 3, right? Just choose without any order. Very good. 12 choose 3. So the formula, using the formula, let's use the formula. My N is 12. I look a little bit up on the page. So I have N factorial, so 12 factorial divided by r factorial, which is 3, d factorial, and then n minus r is what? 12 minus r? Yeah, so and my r is what? So my n is 12, right? And my r is 3. So 12, n minus r is what? 9. So 9 factorial. Well, shouldn't there be like a parentheses? Well, I just calculated 12 minus 3. Okay. You can you can put it in steps. I just take 3. Okay, so if I didn't have the calculator, I mean, I can enter the whole thing into calculator, or I can also notice, look at this. 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times that of that times 3 times 2 times 1. Agree? Agree. Divided. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7 times da 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 times 3 times 2 times 1. Do you see how I have 9 times 8 times 7 and da 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 in the numerator and denominator? Do you see how I can cancel them out? Yeah? So now I have just 12 times 11 times 10 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which is kind of easier to, to calculate. This is what? 12 divided by 6, 2, 22, 22, 0. 220. See how much fun working with factorial so we can get this out? <laughs> or you can use calculator. I just wanted you to see this. Maybe. Okay. So the next part of the problem. If we now know that one gymnast wins the gold, one gymnast wins the silver, and one gymnast wins the bronze, how many possible outcomes are possible? Now is this permutation or combination? Now we, we care about the order. We care not about choosing the three, but actually placing them. So now 12 place three. Start with 12 and then place three in specific roles. Gold winner, silver winner, bronze winner. So this is permutation. And we use the formula for permutation. And it would be 12 factorial divided by n minus r is 9, so 9 factorial. And so this 
Nine, I got nine from twelve minus two factorial. And so doing the same three, twelve plus eleven times ten 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 times so that, that, and get the number. Mm -hmm. What is that? Seven nine eight three three six zero zero. Oh, too many. No. Why? What is this? Thirteen twenty. Thirteen twenty. That's what I have. How, How did you get it? I put. It gets even easier. <laughs> we can do the whole formula in one step in the calculator. So from now on, all we will have to do is decide fermentation or combination, and then just enter the formula, either NPR or CPR. Yeah, we don't even need to worry about factorials anymore. How easy is I told you it will get easier. Right? So in calculator, type in your N, go to mass, probability, choose either N place R or N choose R, and then type in your R. Hit enter and you will get the answer. So let's try. Let's try this example. 13 basketball players are competing for five starting positions. The players selected to start will make up the first team. How many different first teams are possible? Combination or fermentation? I think it's combination, right? We are just choosing five different groups out of the 13 basketball players, right? Combination. No, no, but we are choosing, we have certain players, right? And we need to choose five starting positions, so we need to choose five out of 13, right? That's it. We don't care about which one where. All we care about is five, yes. Look at this. Right? So this is combination. I have certain players and I need to choose five. All I do is enter this whole thing into calculator. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thirteen. Answer again. Oh, one second. So mass prob, yeah, prob, and then I need either P or C, or the fermentation or combination. So I have combination. So choose C for combination, and then five for R, and then just enter, and your answer is twelve eighty seven. Wait, what? Um. So can, if your calculator is not fancy like Mrs. R's here, it might look like this. So 13, and then we go to mass probe, and then we still have choice number D for combination, and then R, our R is five. <laughs> It could look like this. Same answer. So twelve eighty seven. Questions? Can you do that the same for NPR? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so let's practice. Turn the page, let's practice. Question one. You know what? You do this one. Looks hard. Okay. Let's read the question. The main part is choosing permutation versus combination, right? 
Fifteen students ask to visit their counselor. Each scheduled visit includes one student. In how many ways can ten time slots be assigned? So we have fifteen students, ten time slots. Yes. I have trouble figuring out what the permutation. Let's practice. So I have fifteen mm -hmm. time slots, right? Let's start with one p.m. and then every visit, fifteen minutes, right? So one to one fifteen and then 1.15 to 1.30, and so on, right? In how many ways I have total of how many spots? 10, ten time slots, right? 15 students, 10 time slots. So does it matter which, the, the question is in how many ways can 10 time slots be assigned, right? I can put Louis here or Louis there, different, so all these are combinations. No, right? One, two, three or is this combination or permutation? This is com this is it's C because there's not an exact order that they want you to put it in. In how many ways can time ten time slots be assigned? Permutation. Because it's different outcome whether I put Louis here or here. Whether I say it goes at one or at two PM. Right, so it is a permutation. Yeah. Order may make general statement if it is like how many ways to be right. No, that's permutation. If the if the uh, if the question oh, was okay. 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 okay, so how can I change well, this question to make a combination? How how can I change this problem to make it combination problem? Don't lose the test time. I could say how many students can go to the counselor that day if it only if we only have ten spots a day, yeah. right? How many students? Mm -hmm. So, what if a student or a lady? Well, because mm -hmm. God's end of the number. So this is permutation problem because mm -hmm. the placement matters because each out of ten slots is assigned. So we have what, a fifteen students placed in ten different slots. We are, we are not just choosing 10 students out of 15, we are placing them, assigning them to the slot. So the focus of this is not the students, but the time? Slot. Yes, yes, they're so different. The the it's like gold medal versus bronze medal, right? 1 p.m. versus 2 p.m. So now you can enter this into calculator. It has to be, like it has to be. What is permutation? It's like permutation. Oh. oh. No, no, no. So this one is, oh my goodness, 10, 8, 9, 6, 4, 5, 6. That's what I have. Well, you know what? It's approximately, right? Because there is the scientific notation, so you'd have to, like, yeah. It's too much. In how many ways can the letters in the word hornet be arranged? Oh. Now, combination or permutation? We are rearranging. So does it matter whether I write it like this, four nets versus sore head matters? Well, I'm talking about different ways. I'm talking about different ways to arrange the letters. So obviously I have the first, second, third, so I'm placing the letter in specific spot, so the order matters. That's the whole sense of this problem. I'm not just choosing three three letters out of seven. I'm placing them. Placing versus just choosing. Is it seven and seven? Because there's like no other number. Is it seven? Yes. So seven P seven. Yes. Do you understand that these are two different ways to arrange the letters? Yeah. So what is this? Um, Permutation, because I have the first letter, the second letter, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. And as long as I change the order, it's a different variation. So permutation, order, matters. Combination, you're just choosing the group, right? Permutation, you are placing them in specific place, in specific role. Combination would be how many ways can I choose three letters out, out of these seven? So order matters. Here, order matters. Okay. Permutation. Right. Okay, so I have set permutation, order matters. 
You guys, this is hard. Like the permutation, the, the deciding which one is which, when to use it. So let's, let's try these examples, okay? Be open minded. Don't be here. Oh, I can't. Permutation. So I have seven letters to choose from. I place the letters into seven specific spots. So it's seven P seven. What is it? And I can I have five thousand different letters that I can create from just seven letters. Okay. Get it? Good. So just order matters. Yes, just order matters. That's why we highlighted it. Order matters, order doesn't matter. I don't know. It doesn't matter, it's still Okay. Questions about this one? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I get it. Questions about I just had trouble deciding. After I decide, I know I'm doing Okay. Okay, so here. How many ways can the word heard then be arranged? So because order matters, order matters, right? We are placing letters in specific spots. So this is permutation. So seven letters to choose from, we are placing them in seven spots. Are we done? Now think about it. Herndon, is, the word Herndon is different from the word Hornet, in which way we have the same letter twice, H or, I'm sorry, N and N. Ooh, ooh, right? Beautiful. So Herndon, if I just switch these two letters, this one with that one, it kind of looks the same. Right? It is the same. It is the same. So, in some of these variations, there will be duplicates. And how many duplicates? Two. Two for each, right? That is it's just, so you have to divide by two. Yep. So now five to uh, four, uh, five zero, four to divided by two. Yep. So you have to be mindful about these things. This is aggravating. Oh, you hate it. I love it. I want to hit something now. Shut up. Okay. Finally. Oh my God. Is it five minutes? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Three minutes. <laughs> So let's see. Yeah. If a problem has multiple permutations, combinations, or whatever, you need to decide whether you want to add them or multiply them. So you would do each permutation and combination separately and then either add or multiply. Let's see what we mean by that. A movie rental business is having a special on new releases. The new releases consist of eight comedies, three family, 10 action, seven drama, and two mystery movies. Suppose you want, to, you want exactly three comedies and two dramas. How many different movies combinations can you get? So I'm talking about three comedies, right? How many comedies can I can I read? How many different comedies can I choose? Is this I I need to choose three comedies out of eight? Is it combination or permutation? Combination. I want to take three comedies, take them home, right? Just that. Yes. Yeah, so it's eight C three, right? So this is how many different options for my comedy stuff. But then I also want to three, take two dramas out of seven available ones. So there is this uh, seven C2. And now I need to decide what to do with these two numbers. Uh, I don't know. Now let's see about this. I want comedies and I want dramas. If I think about this as a three, right? I have so many choices for my comedy file stuff, right? And then for each of these choices, I will have several different choices for the drama stuff. So I have to multiply them. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.